Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's YouTube video I want to talk a little bit about art because it's something personally I'm very passionate about. Even though I'm studying a philosophy degree, art has been something which has always been so important to me. It's been something that I kind of spend a lot of my spare time doing and I thought it'd be really interesting to kind of share what I've learned in recent years when it comes to creating art. Obviously I'm only 21 but I've been kind of on this sort of art journey for a good few years now and I feel like it'd be really nice to kind of connect with my viewers and the people who watch this video just to kind of talk about what we've learned in recent years and just kind of share tips about how we've kind of made authentic art and how we've got better at art and what we've kind of learned on our art journey. Before this video starts properly I just kind of want to mention the fact that there are various forms of art. This isn't just paints and pencils even though that's going to kind of be the medium that I'm going to be talking about most during this YouTube video. But what we're going to be talking about today is relevant for whatever kind of art you're interested in. Obviously you've got photography, you've got theatre, you've got dance, you've got music. There are various types of different kind of expressions and forms of art. It's all relevant for whatever kind of form of art you focus on. And a little side note is the fact that yes, I haven't kind of pursued art in a sort of educational setting. It's always been something that I'm passionate about and I think I want to kind of use that position in the sort of art community to talk about this. I'm not this full-time artist who has been studying art for years. I'm literally just a girl who is kind of expressing herself through art and has been trying to make art for years and has been learning things about herself through art. And I feel like because I'm a sort of amateur artist, I suppose that will hopefully allow us to kind of connect with each other and give each other advice because I'm kind of figuring out what I'm doing as well and it will be nice to kind of share ideas with you guys and to kind of create this little community of like-minded people. Okay so let's crack on with what I've learned in the recent years. One tip that I'm kind of grateful the fact that I've kind of picked up on is use your previous art as inspiration. I'm saying this because about I think it was last year sometime I went through all of my art through GCSE art when I was in high school but it was nice to kind of see what I had created years ago and despite this art sort of being in my eyes not that great I kind of found it inspiring to see what my past self had created. The stuff I was painting back then was stuff that I wouldn't necessarily paint now and by looking at the stuff I created in my past I ultimately found it more inspiring than the stuff that I create now and that I base my inspiration off of. I don't know if this comes down to when you're younger, maybe you express yourself a little bit more. Maybe you care less about what you're creating. I remember in high school when I was doing GCSE art, I was kind of just trying to express myself, trying to figure out different styles and I think there was less pressure to do well. Obviously, yes, there was grades to GCSE art and yes, I had to do kind of well, but at the same time, I didn't have that concern about what my friends thought about me and what the people on the internet think about my art. I was just kind of trying to create good art for the sake of getting a good grade and creating stuff that I ultimately wanted to create. So if you have any pieces of art that you created from a good few years ago, flick through them and allow yourself to kind of gain inspiration from them. Like I said before, if this isn't just paints and pencils, if you do photography, this is still relevant. Whatever kind of art form you, you focus on, this is still relevant. You can use this and look at your older stuff before you actually cared as much about what people think. When you're starting off using this kind of medium, what kind of stuff were you creating? What were you naturally kind of pulled towards? And use that as inspiration because obviously the person you were years ago isn't you. They're ultimately a different kind of part of you. They're a different version of you. So when I look at kind of paintings that I did and drawings I did when I was 15, that almost doesn't feel like it was me. It kind of looks like I was looking at someone else's paintings, another 15 year old's paintings. So you can kind of allow yourself to separate from your past paintings. You don't have to look at it and think, God, that's so awful. You can kind of laugh about it and be like, okay, yeah, you messed up a little bit, but that's inspiring. Maybe that's a bit abstract. Like, how can I use this style to inspire me a little bit more? Kind of linked to the previous point is make art that you want to. I say this because as someone who finally got the confidence to start posting their art a couple of years ago, my obsession with sort of what other people wanted to see kind of took control over my art. This may not be relevant to you if you don't post your art or if you're quite good at not caring about what people think. But obviously naturally a lot of us worry about what people think. We make art and we think, oh, what are they, what are they gonna think about it? Or I hope people like this. Because obviously when you're sharing things with people, when you're sharing your art, 
that ultimately makes you kind of vulnerable. It's scary posting art. It took me years to finally gain the confidence to start posting my art online to kind of say, hey, this is what I created. And sure, it's not perfect, but I'm pretty proud. And I found that when posting my art, sure, at the beginning, I maybe didn't worry too much. But as I got into the habit of posting new things, seeing certain likes, seeing certain responses to the kind of styles I was using, ultimately I got a good idea of what people like to see, what kind of styles, what kind of things people wanted to see from my art. And obviously this is my own fatal error to kind of acknowledge the fact that, okay, yeah, sure, most of my followers on Instagram would like a certain style or a certain drawing of a certain thing. And when I don't do that thing, then sure, they're not going to like it as much. But ultimately, that's not the important part. The important part isn't how many likes you get and what people want to see. The important part is, do you like what you're making? And sure, you might like what you're making, but it may not be as authentic and what you truly want to be creating. But the point I'm kind of trying to make is the fact that I was kind of obsessing over what other people thought about my art. I was so worried about what people thought about these different styles because I was ultimately still trying to find my style and that's something I'm still kind of working on. I kind of make art because I enjoy it but I don't have a strong style which is specifically mine. I'm finding myself a little bit more as I kind of continue to make art and express myself in different ways and trying out different mediums but ultimately I was experimenting. And I feel like if maybe you're like me and you worry a little bit about what people think about you and the stuff that you create Ultimately, sometimes you need to kind of have a bit of a reality check, have a little bit of a talk to yourself. Accept the fact that yes, you are worrying a lot about what people think about your art when you do post it, or maybe if you don't post online, it's the art that you show to your friends and your family. It's natural to worry what your friends and your family and viewers think about your content and about your art, and that's a normal thing to worry about. But the problem is, is when you let that get in the way of your creating, and when you let that kind of change your style and to only do a certain type of art just because that's what people like because that's not maybe what you like so if you do maybe get a little bit anxious about what people think about you look at your art look at the stuff that you're creating do you think that's a true representation of what you want to create do you want to try out something different a new style maybe try it out and i think the best way to do that is make something with no intention of showing it that's something that i've really been enjoying at the minute i've been posting less art but I've still been creating behind the scenes and even though I'm not posting it I'm still putting the hard work in. No one is going to be seeing this painting, this is just for me, this is just for practice. If it ends up terribly, fine and if it ends up really good, sure, maybe I'll post it but I probably won't because this isn't about posting, this is about finding my style, being able to express myself in a new way. So maybe if you do post a lot of art or show your art to your friends and family Maybe make some art which you have intention of not showing anybody because I find that sometimes that's what allows us to kind of find the most authentic style that we want to start creating when we're kind of experimenting with our arts. Another kind of lesson that I've kind of learned recently is to try out different mediums. And obviously this seems like an obvious answer. It's like, of course I need to try different kind of mediums when it comes to art. Whether, you know, if you paint usually, try different paints, use watercolours, use gouache paint, use oil paintings, use different mediums. But sometimes it's so easy to be trying different mediums which you think you're going to be good at. I'm going to be a little bit more specific here and kind of give my example just to kind of help kind of allow us to kind of reflect on how we may not be using the mediums that we ultimately could be trying out. So throughout my life, I've always kind of just used acrylic paints and gouache, sometimes watercolours and I'd dibble dabble in oil pastels and stuff like that. But my main kind of medium that I was using was gouache paint or acrylic paint. And I really liked them. I had good control over them and I just kind of felt comfortable using that medium. But something I'd never actually tried and never thought I would be able to try would be oil paints. Oil paints is a kind of medium that kind of scared me. That's what professionals use. I'm not good enough to use oil paints. So I never let myself to kind of experiment with oil paints. And ultimately that stopped my ability to grow and to find my style. Since trying out oil paints, that's become my new favorite medium. I've been able to express myself in a way that I haven't been able to before. And sure, I'm dibbling and dabbling with the old mediums I used to use, but I've been able to find myself more using oil paints. And obviously this may not necessarily happen with you with a medium that you've always wanted to use, but maybe it will. And I think that's why I'm kind of throwing out there that that medium, that kind of medium that you've wanted to use for ages, or maybe a new type of expression, whether you're a painter but you want to try photography, or you're a, photography, you're a photographer but want to try making art, try that different thing that you think you're not capable of using, or you think, oh, it's not going to be good enough for me. 
try out that different medium and it will allow you to express yourself, hopefully, in a way that you haven't been able to before. Something that pushed me to try oil paints was when I was going around art galleries, I noticed that the majority of the paintings were oil paints. And I think that's what made me think only professionals use oil paints. I always kind of thought I'm not good enough to use oil paints. You know, I'm still kind of getting the hang of garbage paint and acrylic paint, but I'm not good enough to use oil paints. That's what the professionals use. That's what people who have art in art galleries use. How could I possibly use oil paints? And obviously it seems like a silly question, but it just seemed like such hard work. And I ultimately didn't want to fail using oil paints, but it was something I looked forward to using perhaps in the future. But when walking around art galleries and seeing all these different types of art or oil paintings, in my head I thought, I need to give oil paintings a go. But try out a different medium. For me it was oil paints that I felt inspired when I was going around art galleries and I was seeing all these paintings, which majority of them were oil paints. And from kind of getting inspiration from that and now I'm able to use oil paints, I can gain a little bit of inspiration. I can use a certain style when doing my paintings and I've been able to express myself in a new way that I hadn't been able to before when I was using other mediums that I felt too comfortable using. They were the safe option. Oil paintings or using oil paints is really difficult sometimes. And when I started, I was terrible and I'm still learning how oil paints work. But because I'm learning, I'm able to express myself in a new way because I'm using a kind of medium which ultimately is able to express myself a little bit more when I use it in my art. My final point in this video, which is something else which I've learned in recent years about creating art, is get inspiration from art galleries, which is kind of linked to the previous point that I just made, but they go kind of hand in hand. Majority of us, we probably get our inspiration online. A lot of us use Pinterest, or we just kind of Google inspiration to help us with our paintings and what we're creating. And as great as that is to kind of be able to have thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of styles of art online at our fingertips that we can just get inspiration from, sometimes I find that it's not as effective as going to an art gallery and seeing a painting in person. And ultimately, I love going to an art gallery. I find it so inspiring to see different styles which you wouldn't traditionally get inspiration from. But despite us being able to get all this inspiration at the tip of our fingertips, Sometimes it's better to be able to see not only a painting in person because it can kind of create more awe and more of a feeling and more inspiration than just seeing it on a flat screen, but ultimately when you go to an art gallery you can't control what styles you're going to be seeing, what kind of styles of art and what's going to inspire you. For example, if you want a certain style of portrait you can literally google that in in a couple of seconds and you'll have loads of inspiration. And that's incredible, but the example I'm going to be giving is when I went to Amsterdam and I visited the Reject Museum. So the Reject Museum is this beautiful, beautiful museum which is filled with art. And the art which is in this museum is incredible. Now, whenever I go to an art gallery, I kind of always prepare myself to feel inspired. I always leave an art gallery with some sort of inspiration, a bit of inspiration to kind of try something new. Majority of us, we probably get our inspiration online. A lot of us use Pinterest, or we just kind of Google inspiration to help us with our paintings and what we're creating. And as great as that is to kind of be able to have thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of styles of art online at our fingertips that we can just get inspiration from, sometimes I find that it's not as effective as going to an art gallery and seeing a painting in person. But the moment I realised how important it is to get inspiration from art galleries was when I went to see this one particular painting. And this painting is a young Italian woman with the dog puck. So this painting was created around the 1880s and I have a tiny little postcard of it just because it was so inspiring to me that I just knew I had to get like a paper copy of it. For some people you may look at that painting and think yeah sure it's a nice painting but mm, it's not really creating that much inspiration for me. Getting inspiration with paintings is so personal to you. Something that jumps out to me may not jump out to you. But I think what made this painting so special is not because of the painting itself, but seeing it in person and by seeing the brush strokes and being seen and by seeing the sort of details of the skin and the folds of the fabric, it, it inspired me so much. And this painting is an oil painting. And I was looking at this painting and I started sobbing when I saw it. I was with my good friend at the time and I think she was confused with why I was crying at this painting. But I hadn't felt this much inspiration when looking at a piece of art for a while, probably because I hadn't been to an art gallery for a while. And I think if I had seen that painting just on a screen, I would have thought, yeah, nice painting. Maybe I can get use it as a little sort of inspiration, but I don't think it would have nearly had the impact that it did on me 
if I hadn't seen it in person. By seeing the physical brushstrokes and by seeing a painting in person makes it feel so real and I feel like it allows you to really see how hard the artist worked to kind of create that piece. And obviously you can't probably go to an art gallery every weekend, so don't get me wrong, this isn't something that you can always do. We have the internet at our fingertips, we should use that, we should use that majority of the time. But now and then it's nice and refreshing to get a little bit of inspiration from an actual art gallery, to see these paintings in person, because they can create more awe than they can over a picture, or at least that's what I find at least. And not only that, by seeing a painting in person, it allows you to see the details a tiny bit more. The refined details which you maybe have not noticed when you just look at it on a screen, instead when you have the time to stroll slowly around an art gallery, it allows you to really look at them details. Something that really jumped out to me in a lot of these very famous paintings is they often have an unfinished look to them. And I think that comes down to the focus of the painting. If it's a portrait, for example, obviously they don't want to put in so much detail on the face and the background because otherwise it merges into one. So it's really interesting to kind of see how artists are able to show details to what they want the viewers to be focusing on. And sure, they want things in the background and they want small details, but that's not the important stuff. A lot of stuff is kind of blurry and not quite perfected and, oh, is that a dog in the background? I can't quite tell. Because that's not the important part. By seeing this sort of imperfect, perfect style of paintings, it inspired me. It showed, for me at least, that paintings don't have to be perfect. I think I get in my head a little bit being like, everything has to be so detailed, but rather it depends on what you want that piece of art to show, what you want it to represent, what you want the viewer to see and to think about when you make that piece. And obviously art isn't too deep for a lot of people, I don't really focus on the deep meanings of a painting. But from visiting the Reject Museum and recently going to art galleries and really analysing art a little bit more in person, I've allowed myself to kind of analyse art a little bit more and be inspired to kind of create art with a deeper meaning that can may create more emotion than my art has ever done before. So whatever kind of art form you're interested in, whether it be music, photography, theatre, go to a show, go to a concert, go to the theatre, see this art in person, because uh, sometimes it allows you to analyse it in a way that seeing it on a screen doesn't. But I hope you enjoyed this video today, thank you so much for listening. Share your advice, whatever kind of medium you use and whatever kind of art form you like to focus on, let me know, comment down below, what kind of tips and tricks have you learned in the recent years? I could write a whole book about all the stuff that I've learned in recent years about art, but I thought it'd be kind of nice to, to share my sort of thoughts and inputs about what I've learned in recent years as a sort of amateur artist. But yes, thank you so much for watching today guys, and I hope you have an amazing day.